Good evening, everyone. Generation Z just surpassed millennials as being the largest generation group, making up 32% of the global population. Gen Z is showing up time and time again, showing they're ready to enter a more diverse and inclusive workforce. Hello, my name is Roxana Boren, and I had the honor of being the team lead for the Glen M. Broom Center for Professional Development and Public Relations Dare to Change PR campaign. Tonight, we're gonna to walk you through a little bit about the campaign that transitioned us all from students to young professionals ready to take on the workforce. So who is our client? Established in 2012, the Glenn M. Broom Center for Professional Development was started by Dr. Glenn M. Broom, who is a pioneer in the industry. He taught over 3,000 students here at SDSU and helped write the Cutlip and Center's effective public relation textbook that practitioners are still using around the world today. Shortly after his passing in 2019, the Broom Initiative was started to ensure that students such as ourselves are still pushing the status quo in the industry every single day. So each year, the Broom Center hosts the Allen H. Center Distinguished Lecture in Public Relations to promote diverse voices. This year, being the fifth annual center lecture and our first in-person event after the pandemic, the team wanted to go big. We decided to take the momentum that Gen Z has from the great resignation and Black Lives Matter movement to see how we could promote further change. We did this by inviting keynote speaker, Charlene Wheelis to come in and talk a little bit about her struggles as a black businesswoman climbing the corporate ladder in America. Everyone, my name is Anna Marie Munoz, research lead of this campaign. Since 2012, the Broom Center has invested in real world learning opportunities for PR students and practitioners. When the Broom Initiative launched in 2019, Dr. Broom's vision for the center expanded beyond the campus of SDSU and the Broom Center is now known countrywide. Although Dr. Broom passed away before the Broom Initiative began, the Broom Center continues to maintain the iconic legacy of Dr. Glenn Broom. Under the Broom Initiative, our client pushes the PR industry forward and dares to change PR in more ways than one while maintaining its allyship in social justice issues. Now I know we all got into PR to talk about numbers, so let's move on into our quantitative research. We distributed our 22 question pre-campaign survey using Qualtrics, which resulted in 35 computer responses. We first wanted to know respondents' levels of knowledge about the Broom Center and its services. Taking a look at the bigger picture of progress the Broom Center has made since past center lectures, if we take the fourth center lecture or 4CL for example, we can, uh, there was moderate to low levels of knowledge about the Broom Center. Our findings shown in the purple dots show that um, respondents' knowledge levels have slightly dropped since previous center lectures, and respondents showed a relatively low level of knowledge about the Broom Center's services. These findings indicated to us that there was an opportunity to increase knowledge in our center lecture. Next, we wanted to measure respondents' positive attitudes towards the Broom Center and their likelihood to spread positive word of mouth. Respondents, both students and professionals, indicated an overall neutral attitude toward the Broom Center, and they were only moderately likely to engage in the spread of positive word of mouth. But PR professionals shown in the purple dots were slightly more inclined to do so than students. Positive word of mouth being one of the most powerful tools to increasing awareness and positive attitudes, we knew we had to increase these numbers in our center lecture. Finally, we wanted to assess respondents' feelings about diversity, inclusion, and belonging in the industry. Again, if we take 4CL as a marker for growth, our findings were nearly identical to that of the previous center lecture. While these findings remained moderate, it was likely a representation of the atmosphere in the workplace today, and our client is never one to shy away from a challenge. Hi, my name is Alicia Benke, and as part of the research team, I'm gonna share a little bit about our qualitative research. Our team conducted a total of eight interviews of PR professionals, PR students, and PRSSA members across three counties in San Diego and one county in Los Angeles. Our interviews were focused to better understand the knowledge and interest of the Broom Center, the Center Lecture, and the current status of diversity and inclusion within PR. PR professionals and students, particularly those from San Diego State University, shared that the PR community holds a responsibility to create a diverse and inclusive work environment, yet is failing to do so. The PR industry has taken, has acknowledged the meaning of diversity, but is yet to take any actions or steps to follow through. 
Participants shared with us that during their time at SDSU, they've attended a variety of DEI events and lectures and shared that these are vital for entering professional industries. Although none of our participants were familiar with Charlene Wheelis, they all expressed interest in listening to her message in how to become a better ally towards traditionally marginalized communities. Participants are eager to attend an event that discusses DEI and noted that they would be incentivized to attend if they were able to make the event a networking opportunity. By creating an interactive space for participants to connect, people shared that this would be a unique and beneficial aspect of a DEI lecture. All participants are willing and looking to attend an event that discusses the cross-section of diversity and inclusion, public relations, and the future. All participants shared with us that they would feel most safe in attending if the event followed strict COVID-19 protocols, including mask mandates, vaccination requirements, or proof of a negative test. Hi everyone, my name is Celia and I'm a part of the research team. So while the fourth center lecture was our primary marker for growth, we also conducted a competitor analysis. Because if there's one thing about the Broom Center is we not only want to be better than last year, we want to be the best around. We identified our main competitors as the Planck Center at the University of Alabama and the Institute for Public Relations, which is better known as IPR. Given that we had a lot of similarities with our competitors, this led us into a SWOT analysis to see what really stood out at the Broom Center. A strength we had was that we had a, prof a great professional relationship with professional PR communities here in San Diego, Southern California, and across the nation. At San Diego State, graduating from the PR program means that you're ready to hit the workforce the second you cross that stage, so that was imperative to our professional setup. Second, we see our weaknesses. I'm not going to lie to you guys, our weakness was our TikTok dance abilities. I don't know if you've seen those. <laughs> TikTok dances, it's hard, to, it's hard to execute, I'm not gonna lie. But later on, you'll see how we did need more engagement with short form video content. So we supplemented that just like Screen and Circle with IG Reels. Then we had an opportunity for growth when it came to earned media. Even though we've been in plenty of media over the years, we know what we have to offer is very important for young professionals and we needed to be louder. Then that led us into lastly, our threats, which was that our competitors had more access to capital and to media outlets than we did. But like Anna-Marie said, we're not gonna shy down from a challenge. Hi, my name is Jemly Mamiha and I am part of the research and logistics team. I will lead you through the problem statement. The Broom Center does its yearly center lecture to promote its services and be leaders in the PR industry. However, when you look at the data, knowledge about the Broom Center decreases in between each lecture. Emphasizing the importance of Diversity will help keep this in there memorable. Also, our slogan, Dare to Change PR for this year's campaign, will promote positive change and promote the center itself. Hi, everyone. My name is Serena Ardazzo. I was the logistics team lead for this campaign. And when planning our campaign, we decided we wanted to include San Diego State PR interested students, San Diego PR professionals, as well as San Diego State undeclared majors within our target public. As Alicia previously stated, both PR professionals and students are interested in learning more about DEI and actions they could take within the industry to help it become more diverse. So to help guide our campaign, we created five objectives that were to be completed by May 2022. Our first objective was to increase the awareness of the Broom Center as we found students were unaware of its opportunities and resources. We also wanted to increase the general knowledge of the Broom Center as we found PR professionals were more aware of the Broom Center than students. Next, we wanted to increase the word of mouth of the Broom Center as this is a powerful tool that we should be utilizing. And we also wanted to increase the positive attitude with the Broom Center as this is a great way to maintain relationships with our target public. And lastly, we wanted to increase the attendance of the center lecture as this was the Broom Center's first in-person event since the COVID-19 pandemic. Hello everyone, my name is Patrick Azaro, messaging lead for the campaign. We put our message in into effect by implementing media pitches, creating social media content and sending out press releases. To gain media coverage, we sent out pitches to journalists in line with our message and for further promotion, we sent out press releases to the College Professional Studies of Fine Arts and San Diego State University JMS professors. So when engaging with our target publics, we wanted, to make, make, we wanted to stay consistent with our messaging. We wanted to lean in on the idea that everybody could dare to change PR to make it more diverse and inclusive. How did we do this? We did this by offering in-brand incentives during JMS in-class announcements and on-brand swag, such as branded branded, a branded notebook, T-shirts, that nice T-shirts over, over there, and a tote bag right there. And we also had a PowerPoint that depicted the historical moments in PR. 
we wanted to keep that consistent messaging through our event promotion as well. Hi everyone, my name is Avery Judon and I was a part of the messaging team. Some event promotion tactics that we decided to utilize was the San Diego State Freeway Marquee, the Digital Marquee in the Adams Humanities Building in the Tula Center. We posted flyers on on-campus bulletin boards as well as classroom announcements. In addition, we created a raffle that gave our attendees a chance to win a copy of Charlene Lewis's book, as well as a gift card to Starbucks, Trader Joe's, or Chipotle. Students had a chance to have their members, their PRSSA membership fees paid, as well as PR professionals having the chance to have their APR fees paid. We also had an interactive truth or dare table that encouraged our students to network with professionals. And we also had an interactive how do you dare PR wall that encouraged all of our attendees to engage in conversations about how they would dare to change the PR industry. We really wanted to give our attendees a chance to learn more about diver diversity, equity, and inclusion in an interesting and interactive way, as well as giving students a chance to um, network with PR professionals. We also increased our attendance by um, partnering with on-campus organizations like PRSSA and Alpha Chi Omega. We also utilized um, social media like LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. Creating awareness on social media was a huge part of the continued success of our campaign. Hi, my name is Sarah Joyce and I was a part of the messaging team. Our team utilized the social media platforms of the Broom Center in order to do pre and post event promotional content. Through the use of both Instagram and Twitter, we utilized a number of different content styles in order to best engage with our audience. On Instagram, we posted the promotional event flyer prior to the event in order to inform our followers of the lecture. After this, we utilized a new content style known as Reels. Reels allowed our team to create videos using current trends in order to engage with our younger target audience. During the event, we posted stories in real time, which allowed us to continue to track user engagement. From February 18th to March 20th, our posts reached 6,622 accounts, which was a 2,215% increase from the month prior. The story, the flyer that we posted prior to the event reached 272 users, while the event day posts reached 143. On Twitter, we posted the event flyer as well as the link to the Eventbrite so users could sign up. We also live tweeted during the event quotes from the keynote speaker, Charlene Wheelis. Following the event, we continue to post quotes as well as promotional progressive-based content about progressive PR pros. Over the span of time from February 17th to March 21st, our posts had 3,791 impressions and 203 engagements with users. During this time, 11 tweets were posted to the account. Nice to see you guys again, I'm back. So this is my favorite part, media coverage and publicity. So in order to increase the knowledge objective of the Broom Center, we pitched to many different journalists and publications throughout the area. We secured own media coverage and earned media coverage. Our own media coverage consi um, consisted of SDSU's finest, The Daily Aztec, blog posts from the Broom Center, and PSFA stories. And our earned media coverage consisted of, guess what? Our main competitors, the Institute for Public Relations, and Platform Magazine. And we also got a personal blog post through Entrovision by Lucellus Martinez, a reporter. So now that we've talked about the logistics for the campaign, let's talk about our evaluation. Hi everyone, my name is Trinity Tran and I was on the research team. As my team previously mentioned, we compiled a list of five objectives aimed at increasing awareness of the Broom Center and its resources, as well as sparking the initiative to change PR. Let's take a look at those objectives now and their results to see how we did. So our first objective was to increase general knowledge of the Broom Center and its resources and what it has to offer to our topic publics. And we wanted to do so by 5%. We ended up surpassing this goal by a landslide as we increased it by 55%. Next, we knew that the most powerful tool in order to increase awareness of the Broom Center was through word of mouth. So we wanted to increase positive word of mouth about the Broom Center by 5% and we ended up doing so by 20%. This being our first in-person center lecture since the pandemic, our team knew that we had to take advantage of this and increase attendance as much as we could. Because of this, we wanted to increase in-person attendance by 10%.
and ended up doing so by 56%, resulting in 113 attendees, making us the second largest in-person center lecture for the Broom Center. Fourth, when daring to change PR, we knew it was of the utmost importance to maintain a positive relationship with our target publics. Because of this, we wanted to increase positive attitude towards the Broom Center by 5% and ended up doing so by 20%. Last and arguably our most important objective was to increase general knowledge of what the Broom Center is to those interested in pursuing the PR industry and those within the PR industry. We wanted to do so by 5% and ended up increasing it by 60%. As you all can see by those numbers, it is evident how successful the implementation of our strategies and tactics were, and our team was beyond pleased and satisfied with the results for our client. All right, everyone, it's time to talk money. My name is Alessandra Laconi, and I was the HR manager for the Broom Center's fifth annual center lecture. At the start of our campaign, our team was gifted a budget to assist the center in its goals and objectives toward expansion. Being the first on-campus event since pre-pandemic times, we didn't want this to just be any normal event. We wanted to make it really special. The majority of our budget went towards tactics and promotion of the event. To convey a message as important as daring to change PR, we wanted to go above and beyond and provide our guests with quality items that we know they'd use in their day-to-day -day life and not just some t-shirt they'll shove in a drawer when they get home and only use on cleaning day because let's be real, we all have that one shirt. We splurged on these items because we want people to be reminded of our campaign's message. In fact, one graduate student who attended the center lecture loved her t-shirt so much, Dr. Sweetser said it's the only shirt her student will wear in class now. That's pretty cool to us. So while the numbers behind me are big, our team felt that it was worth every single penny to kick the notch up on our team's budget and really get the center towards its goals and objectives on expansion. The Broom Center has made leaps in progress compared to when it was first initiated in 2012. However, there's still room for growth. As a team, we recommend that the Broom Center makes a special study opportunity for students. Since the Broom Center is mainly run by one very busy person, we feel that the Broom Center should make this special study opportunity to allow students to earn school credit while simultaneously running the Broom Center's social media accounts, write press releases, or just provide any extra assistance when Dr. Sweetser needs it. Another recommendation would be to partner with SDSU's undeclared student advising. At the fifth center lecture, many students were undeclared with little to no knowledge about PR as a major here. If the Broom Center partnered with undeclared student advising on this, we feel that it would be mutually beneficial to both the Broom Center and these students to provide opportunities such as classroom visits or a pamphlet with information about the Broom Center or just general PR knowledge. As the team mentioned, we have made progress and that was just 11 students over the course of the semester. Imagine what we could do if we all came together. We could make history. As public relations practitioners, we are storytellers, but it's time to change the narrative and hear from people that come from traditionally marginalized communities. On that note, I just wanna say thank you so much to this incredible team for all their hard work throughout the course of the semester. And of course, thank you to all of you for coming out tonight to support us. And last but not least, the incredible Dr. Sweetser. She's shown us exactly what it means to be a great leader and I'm incredibly thankful for you. So thank you so much. And on that note, we're happy to answer any questions you may have.